Hallelujah. Welcome one and all to this worship service, Grace Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Hap. I will be leading you in worship this morning. Uh, before we get started, I believe we have a, one or two quick announcements. Thank you. We begin our worship with hymn number 482. Please rise.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, 
Through the humiliation of your son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3, beginning at the 11th verse. While the lame man, who was now clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, as you did, did also your rulers, I know, now know, brothers, that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, that he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things by which God spoke by mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Be Our psalm for today is Psalm 4. We speak it responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. <laughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle comes from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not been revealed. But we will know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who hope, thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. 
little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, and he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and marveling, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> with confidence and assurance, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. And we sing hymn number 483. With high delight, let us unite.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning's message comes to us from our epistle lesson. These few verses in, from 1 John reflect both the certainty and the sobriety of the Christian expectation with regard to the conditions of the life to come as well as its moral conditions. It is a condition of joy, joy in undeserved grace, joy in the assurance of our position as heirs to the kingdom. It is a condition of certainty. We heard about this last week, that the hope that we have as Christians is not a mere wish or flighting fantasy. It is an unshakable confidence concerning the future. It is a promise given to us. It is a fact of our salvation. And there is a responsibility, as Paul writes to the Corinthians, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Excuse me. So exactly what kind of love has the Father given us? Does it make our life on earth any simpler? No. Does it relieve us of toil and trouble, hardship and tribulation? No. It is the kind of fatherly love that sees a child making poor decisions and gently tries to correct him. But despite the father's pleading, the child goes ahead anyway to the disastrous result that was foreseen by the father. Only then the child returns to the loving, tender care of the father. It is the love of a father who does everything he can for the child. He gives him his word for guidance. He sends his only son to teach and ultimately be sacrificed as an offering for the child's sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He establishes sacraments for the forgiveness of sins that the child may be without blemish. All of this he does not out of obligation but out of his love and grace for his children. He doesn't do it because he has to. He does it because he wants to. The language of Christian devotion is never that of pride in anything that we have earned or merited, but of gratitude for something we have received. God did not give his love in order that men might be called sons. His, <coughs> excuse me. his great this of his love is manifest in this, that he allowed himself to be called their father. Earlier in 1 John, he writes, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We are God's children. We are God's children through our baptism. We are God's children through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. But at times, we are wayward children. Despite what he has taught us, we go our own way. Despite what he has done for us, too often we turn away in ingratitude. What kind of love has the Father given us? It is the love of a loving Father who will do whatever it takes to save his children. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our offering.
give to you, O Lord, what you have first given us, our tithes, our time, our possessions, tokens of your gracious love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. this Wednesday and we pray for good results. We also pray for Isabel Campbell who is having hip surgery on Tuesday. We rise. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the Almighty, for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Save and defend your whole church. Purchased with the precious blood of Christ, strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office in our church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel, both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. in your mercy, strengthen newly established congregations and support them in challenging times. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord, and let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. That mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the schools of the church and all colleges, universities, and centers of research, and those who teach and work in them. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state, and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the confidence of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let your blessing remain upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of your people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Jane Singerline and Isabel Campfield. 
Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to, to whom death, death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow. And grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Father, for all that you have done for us, for the love you have given us. That with all the saints in heaven and, and angels above, we may evermore praise you and sing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was portrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. At the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, and he, after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Welcome to the Lord's table.
continue with the Nook de Minas. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude our service with hymn number 465 and a reminder to join us after the service.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.